Hello, so today we're gonna to start this 3D hot air balloon. It is a relief sculpture because it has height and it has width, but it also has depth, part of it sticks up. And it's not a sculpture in the round because it's not meant to be viewed from all sides. The back of this paper doesn't have anything to see, so it's just meant to be viewed from one side, which makes it a relief sculpture. We're gonna start with the drawing part, and then we'll add the clouds and then finish off the hot air balloon part, the 3D relief sculpture part in the very end. So you're gonna start with a light blue piece of paper. You need to write your name and the day you have art. Day A, day B, day C. You're gonna flip it over and then you're gonna take a circle pattern and you're gonna trace around that near the top of your paper. It doesn't have to be right at the very tippy top, but somewhere near the top of your paper. And you're just gonna lightly trace around this because this is just gonna be your guide for where to place the strips, the colored strips, when you're starting the hot air balloon part. So now I need to draw a basket. Now I like to put the basket near the bottom of my paper so that I have plenty of room to add my, my person or people that I'm gonna add in the basket. And you can draw your basket any way you want. If you want to draw a wide basket that's kind of short, you want to draw a more tall basket, um, you want it just it to be a square, that's fine. If you want to make more of a curve, that's okay too. So I'm going to make more of a curved basket. And I'm just lightly sketching it out with my pencil, kind of getting it the shape that I want. And then I need to bring this up to the circle, to the balloon, and then I like to add a couple more ropes on the sides, the main part of the balloon. You don't have to add these if you don't want to. You could add even more more ropes to hold, to tie your basket to the balloon. It would be more sturdy. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is, and then I need to do my basket weave. You can just put crisscross lines, um, you could go diagonal, you could try to make it look really very much like a woven basket by alternating your seams. So I'm going to alternate my seams just to show you what that looks like. You're more than welcome to draw your basket any way you want. You can just draw vertical and horizontal lines crossing over each other and that way. But to make it look more woven, I'm going to add some pieces that are woven. And then the next space is skipped. And then these pieces are... Um, offset. They're not, I'm not going from the bottom all the way to the top. I'm just doing one section at a time. Now I go back to this section and I match these up with the bottom ones in the same spot. Now I bring these up and then I bring these up. So now you're going to go over this bottom part with a black crayon. Um, you could leave your basket empty if you want. You could add a person or two or a whole family if you like. It's up to you. I'm going to add a person standing in the basket. So I'm going to draw the shoulders. And you can draw your person any way you want. It doesn't have to be realistic. It can be more of just a cartoonish uh, person. This is just a for fun little addition that you wouldn't necessarily have to add if you didn't want to. Okay, so there's my little girl. So now I'm ready to do my clouds. So you're gonna get some white scrap paper and you can take and you could fold the scrap paper and cut out more than one cloud at a time. You could fold it in half, have some bigger clouds and some smaller clouds. I can fold it in half again and draw a cloud and then cut out four at the same time. They can be puffy clouds. You could have clouds that have some straight wispy sides to them. Um, but I'm going to leave my paper folded and cut these out at the same time so I get four, four clouds in with one cut. And since this has a pencil line on this side, I want to put my glue on this side so you can't see the pencil lines. And you can add as many clouds as you want. So you don't have to just keep it to four. You could do more than four. So now all that's left is the 3D hot air balloon, the top of the hot air balloon. And you're gonna wanna get yourself a paper towel because you're gonna get a lot, you're gonna probably get a lot of glue on your fingers. And the first step is to 
put a line of glue around the circle on top of the pencil lines and you're gonna get yourself some strips. You won't need nearly this many strips, but these are all the strips I cut, so I just set them up here. Um, and I'm just gonna use random colors like I did in my finished example. Uh, if you wanna limit your color choices to your hot air balloon, you can. So you wanna put a nice bead of glue. It probably doesn't need to be quite this thick. Um, I think I got a little carried away. And now I'm gonna take these strips and I'm gonna bend the ends of them to make a tab or a flap. So I'm gonna bend this in and it's about an inch in. And then leaving, so this is folded this way. So this one gets folded the same, on the same side. So if I look at these, can you see? So let me show you, oops. So you can see they're folded in on the same side of the paper. And then you're gonna put the tabs inside the circle. And you wanna start, the first one is important because you want it to be directly across from one another. You don't wanna do it kind of crooked like this. You want, so it's better, I think, if you start with the first one at the top and bring it straight down to the very bottom middle. And you're gonna put the fold part of the flap uh, into the glue. And this folded crease, that's going to be the outer edge of your balloon. And you want it to be a circle, so you want the outer edge of that fold to just sit right along that glue line. So the next one, I'm gonna fold the flaps over about an inch. They don't, I mean, if it's not exact, that's okay. Then when I do the next one, I'm gonna start next to the first strip. So I'm gonna start this green next to the red. I'm gonna hold that down, put it right next to the red flap. Let me show you. Right next to the red flap, side by side. And then I'm gonna cross over the red, like to make an X, and I'm gonna put it on this opposite side of the red, right next to it. Okay. And this is why you're gonna need a paper towel, because I have a bit of a glue mess. I use too much glue. And so it's kind of seeping through some places. Okay. So now these two are crossing over each other and they're not standing up very good right now. Nope, now they are, now that I played, pulled them a little bit. Okay. So then the next strip, I do the exact same thing. Fold the ends over about an inch. And then I'm gonna put this next to the green on this side. And then it goes next to the green on the opposite side, not next to the red crosses over in the middle and goes next to the green on the opposite side. So once you get the first two, as you work, you're always putting your new strip next to the same color. One end of the strip touches the, end, the same color on the other side. So now this yellow is right next to the pink and it's next to the pink on the other side too. Okay, so now I'm starting to kind of get off track of my circle here. These are kind of going a little bit outside the circle. So I'm gonna pull those in a little bit. I'm kind of going, the circle's getting a little bit bigger than it needs to be. This end over here closest to me is better. So you've gotta keep an eye on that and make sure that you're staying on the circle and your circle isn't starting to become like an organic wobbly shape. You also wanna make sure that your tabs stay about the same size and they won't be able to go over the arch and what we'll start to do is the strips will start to pull the arch down. So if your arch starts to be pulled down then you know that the tabs that you're making, these little tabs that you're folding over are getting too big, that you need to make them a little bit smaller. And as you work, if the strips don't look very nice, they're kind of just wonky or just kind of um, like this red one here isn't laying very nice, all you have to do is kind of pull on it a little bit and kind of get them all kind of in the middle or in the center of the dome. And it helps with the shape of it. So you don't have to be too upset if it doesn't look very neat right here while you're working. We can always manipulate the strips a little bit and um, kind of get them in the right spot. So now since I'm starting to kind of be on the sides of the balloon, I find 
that it gets a little trickier to work from this direction. So what I'm gonna do is turn my paper so that I'm working up and down, top to bottom. I just find it easier to work top to bottom than right to left. I feel like I can see the ends of the strips a little bit better working from this angle. So now I'll do one on the side of the red and then I'll bring this over and do it on this side of the red. Because remember, you stick with the same color. You stay right next to the same color you're working on. And I like to start, I find it comfortable and easier to manipulate by reaching under the dome, under the strips, and holding that one across from me and working from there. Then trying to come around and hold it with my hand, I find it easier just to reach through. And every strip that you glue down always goes over the top. It doesn't go under. Now as I get closer over here to the, the um, cloud, it's okay if you cover up the cloud a little bit if that's what happens because it would just look like the balloon is in front of the cloud. And you just want to always make sure you're folding the flaps on the same side that you don't actually like if you look at this strip if you don't actually fold a flap up and then fold this flap down that they're folded in the same direction okay now as you start to get closer to closing this up you might want to find yourself gluing like this orange strip next to the pink and then crossing over and gluing it over here next to the green you've got to be careful once you start to get to the end that you're paying close attention and trying to make sure that that doesn't happen so you always stay next to the color that you start with, your neighboring color. So right now my neighboring color is going to be orange with this green. I cross over and when I get to this side, it needs my neighbor color needs to be orange again. All right, and I think I'm down to my last strip. Over here is a wider opening than on this side. This side will only fit one strip. So I'm going to go ahead and do one strip and see if that opening um, is really big then maybe we'll do two and I'll show you what to do if that happens to you So let's do one and see what we've got you Could also try to find a slightly wider strip in this pile and see if that helps But I'll just go ahead and stick with this one when you do this last one Sometimes you kind of have to put your finger between but I still think that's probably a big gap over there So I'm gonna go ahead and do one more and try and cram one. So I'm gonna try and find a skinnier one Make sure it fits I get it to fit over here on this side so I actually I'll start on this side first the side closest to me and then we'll know so let's see tight fit but I can get it to fit and so then on this side there won't be that big hole and then you might want to kind of stand over your balloon and kind of just manipulate and uh, work the strips to kind of make sure they make a nice neat dome and there you have your very cute 3D hot air balloon collage. Good job.